I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Wong Suti from Sabah. Here he is. Hi, Dr. Wong. Hi, Peter. We meet again. Small world. We meet again. Apa kabar? Hi. <laughs> Good morning to you. How are things over in Sabah at the moment? I heard there's been a lot of rain and there's been lots of flooding going on in Sabah and Sarawak. Yes, uh, the flood is not hitting us in Sanakan, but we do have rains and especially, you know, our center is at the rainforest. So we do have like afternoon shower and make things cool down for me, which is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Great to know and, and glad to see that you're staying safe and that you've uh, fully recovered from dengue. Uh, well, I would say like 85%. <laughs> <laughs> well, for those of you who, who don't know, dengue is is a, a disease that's uh, pretty common uh, here in the tropics, uh, born by a, a mosquito called the Aedes mosquito. And it, it, it does leave a devastating effect, actually. And uh, Dr. Wong has uh, just recovered from it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very, I'm very lucky to survive. You know, I spent like five days in the ICU. Not fun. I know how ICU looks like. Uh, well, good to see that you're up and at it. So uh, take it away, Dr. Wong. It's all yours. All right. Okay. Let me share my screen. Uh... Hold on. Okay. Can everybody see this okay? All right, so thank you, Peter, and uh, thank you for uh, Global Biodiversity Festival's organizer for inviting me to join this wonderful program. And um, uh, it is a privilege for me to talk to you about our projects, which is the working with the sun bears, you know, and I uh, named this, pro uh, this presentation the novel approach for sun bear research and conservation in Borneo. So as you know, I've been working with the Malayan sun bear for the last uh, uh, more than 20 years. And then this is a very special bear. These are the smallest bear species in the world. And then uh, for me, uh, yeah, they are very special. They have uh, several names. The Malay people call them Burwang Madu, means they are, um, uh, they are, uh, Burwang Madu is uh, honey bears because they love honey. And then uh, the Chinese call them dog bear because they bark like a dog because they, you know, really small size. And then uh, the scientific name Hilaxus, Hila San Arctus bear Malayanas, where they were first found in uh, uh, Malay Peninsula. And then they are found across South Asia, uh, ranging from eastern tip of India, eastern tip of Bangladesh, uh, uh, Myanmar, southern tip of China, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Peninsula, Malaysia, Sumatra, and Borneo. There are two different subspecies of sun bears found in this region, the mainland sun bear, or what we call as the uh, uh, Hilactus malayanus malayanus, uh, double the size of the sun bears that we found here in Borneo. Yeah, and then uh, for the Bonian sun bear, a full grown adult male is about 45 kilograms, and the uh, full grown adult mainland sun bear uh, subspecies are about 80 to 100 uh, kilograms. So they are very different in size, you know. They are listed as vulnerable under the IOCN Red Book listing. And, um, and then, uh, which means that their population has been declining. You know, so conservatively uh, estimates that they have, their population has been declined more than 30% over the last 30 years. Uh, yeah, so the numbers are still keep on shrinking, looking at this uh, anecdotal information on, you know, deforestation, hunting and poaching. Although we do not know that how many bears are there uh, across South Asia, but two years ago, the uh, West Malaysian Authority, the Department of National Parks and uh, uh, Department of Wildlife and National Parks of Malaysia in West Malaysia announced that there are 300 to 500 somewhere left in uh, in in Malay Peninsula. It's, 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 it's over here, so their numbers are definitely going down. Uh, for me, they are very, very unique. These are uh, collections of pictures of bears that we have here at the Bonin Sabah Conservation Center where we rescued. And then you can see all of them have a unique chest patch, which is like no two bears have. have, uh, have. Uh, yeah, so it's just like our fingerprints. And then this chest patch for them is uh, very meaningful because it is a warning sign to, uh, to other animals. Uh, 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 yeah. 
and then the extremely arboreal. They are very special bears, you know, by having these small sizes and by living in this tropical rainforest, they can spend a lot of time on trees, sleeping, foraging on trees for fruits and other invertebrates as well. For me, I started my sun bear research work back in 1998 when I was given the opportunity to study the ecology of sun bears uh, in Sabah. And at the time, uh, no one ever studied sun bears uh, during the time. So actually, there was like two other researchers, students uh, studying sun bears. And I was uh, very, very uh, lucky and very, very privileged to manage to like, you know, study them. I studied at University of Montana. Uh, the typical um, research method by capturing the animals, put radio collar, and then after that, radio track them in the forest to see what they eat and what they do, and all this very basic biology and ecology of the bears. Uh, and then uh, what I found out, you know, years of years of uh, studies is that they are they are very they play many important ecological roles in the forest. First, they are very important uh, forest planter it means that they are very uh, important seed dispersal because after they ingest the seed of the fruits that they eat, you know, the seed carry into their guts and a few hours later, the seed are being, uh, being, being pulled out, you know, in the feces and then germination started. You know, just like this picture showing that durian, especially uh, the wild durian was actually dispersed by sun bears. Uh, yeah, very important forest planter in the forest. They also consider as forest doctor. Uh, although they eat fruits, they also eat a wide range of invertebrates, including termites. One group of the termites in the forest, like these microcerotomates, are known to attack live tree. So when sun bear feed on this termite, it will destroy the nest of the termite and then feed on all these edible portions like the eggs, the larvas, and then uh, and, and the uh, termite is, uh, themselves, and then literally control the termite populations in this forest by preventing many, many trees killed by this forest. So they are considered as forest doctor and make sure that the forest is healthy and equilibrium in you know all of this uh, 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 termite population in the forest. And then they are considered as en forest engineer household. One of the food items that they love to eat is uh, uh, honey. And then uh, in the forest, they feed on the honey from the stingless bee and stingless bee build their hive inside a hollow tree trunk and then after they find the 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 beehive they would excavate with their very strong canine with a very strong teeth and also claws and then eventually they dig a big cavities and then that cavity is later being used by hornbills and other tree cavity nester in the forest as nests so in other words they help create uh nest water species very important forest engineer they're also forest farmer when they feed on a uh, earthworms and other invertebrates that found in the soil. They do a lot of digging, they plow the soil, they enhance the soil nutrient cycle, just like the farmers uh, plowing the soil before the planting occur. And then uh, lately, we also found that they are very important food providers. You know, every time they feed on a decay wood or a termite nest or, or excavate a, a, a termite uh, or earthworms on the ground, there's always something left behind. And then uh, other animals like bearded pigs, like pheasants, like burning ground cuckoo, like the shama, would actually tag along the tail of the sun bears. And after sun bear left, and uh, they would like you know feed up with all this, all this, uh, all this, uh, all these uh, food items that, that that left behind by the sun bears. And then uh, sometimes they will actually like travel together. It's actually quite uh, amazing to see how sun bears tolerate all these animals. Uh, hanging around them and then actually in return these animals may actually uh, give the sun bears extra eye to alert the bears if there's any danger in that area so it's a mutual uh, benefiting kind of relationship that we see in the forest very interesting they are live in this uh, tropical uh, forest across South Asia and of course the very prime habitat for the sun bears is this lowland ditoka forest where the biodiversity is extremely high, you know. And then our uh, recent studies, we also found out that they can actually tolerate a lot of uh, disturbance as long as there's no hunting and poaching, as long as the forests come back, uh, they can live in secondary forests, even, you know, small forest patches surrounded by uh, industrial plantations like the acacia trees, you know, in these kind of patches. So they're extremely diverse, extremely robust, and extremely versatile. 
And then uh, in uh, in Malaysia and Indonesia, we are the prime exporter of palm oil. And then uh, during this, uh, of course, you know, they cannot solely live in this autumn plantation, but they can live in the forest adjacent to the palm plantation as long as they are not hunted down. Uh, we also very surprised to find out that they can actually found in this uh, swampy forest like this Nipah swamp forest where they feed on the Nipah nipa palm seeds and, and so on and so forth. So, but again, their prime habitat is this lowland deep toka forest where it produces a lot of big trees, a lot of hardwood. Unfortunately, all these hardwood species and tall trees are considered as valuable timber species for human consumption. So over the years, um, logging has happened across Southeast Asia, including Malaysia, including Indonesia, and all of these forests are being converted into some plantation or area, other agriculture use. Uh, so which means that some bear lost their habitat forever. On top of that, they are also hunted for meat, for uh, gallbladders, you know, for their paws. Uh, who consider them as a delicacy and things like that. So seeing these kind of pictures uh, is actually quite sad, you know, this kind of thing still happening as we speak. Uh, so, so we need to stop this kind of uh, madness as soon as possible. And sun bears, uh, gallbladder, just like other uh, Asian bear species like the Asiatic black bear are considered as uh, traditional medicines for local uh, people. So they have been harvested. So, yeah. So it's very, I know it's very graphic to see these kind of pictures, uh, bears being chopped up into pieces uh, in wet market. And then uh, lately with this developments of um, highways, uh, roads connect from one point to the other, there are many wildlife being uh, end up with killed, including sun bear. So this is another threat. Uh, sun bear cubs are extremely cute. You know, you know, baby mammals, all baby bay mammals are very cute, but there are a small group of people have this idea of keeping baby uh, sun bears as pets. We thought they are good pets after killing the mother. And then, uh, so that is another problem that we face over here. And all of these babies, you know, including this, uh, yeah, singers uh, in live in Kuala Lumpur a few years ago was found to have a sun bears cub live in her apartment. So she was, of course, fine. Uh, being punished and all of these are illegal, but yet there are people, although very educated people, you know, do this kind of thing. Yeah. So for me, I've been working in uh, with wild sun bears um, in the forest. I see many amazing, wonderful thing about how sun bear live in the forest. But when I come out from the forest, I saw many horrible things. They are being, you know, just the picture that I show you, uh, including those bears that was kept as pets. You know, I've seen hundreds of them uh, during my the course of the work, and all of them locked up in small cages and they need help. So by seeing all of these uh, 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 animals that need help and which is uh, not supposed to happen, you know, uh, the idea of setting up this uh, Bonin Summit Conservation Center come into about uh, back in uh, 2004. And then after years of talking and working with the uh, Sabah Wildlife Department and Sabah Forestry Departments and an NGO called LEAP, L -A -L -E -A -P, stands for Land Empowerment Animal and People Based in Sabah. Uh, and myself, we uh, established this Bonin Sun Bear Conservation Center to, as, to conserve sun bear through holistic approach. Our initial works you know, started with uh, improved animal welfare, education, research, rehabilitation, but later on we also increased uh, ecotourism, uh, um, anti-poaching, and in the future, captive breedings, and so on. Why we need to do all of that? Uh, because uh, everything is uh, interconnected. Uh, everything is needed as long as you know the, it is a need for us to uh, have a species. It is a need to conserve a species, regardless whether this is uh, easy work to do. We need to do them all. So right now, after 13 years, uh, the center was established in 2008, and after 13 years, uh, we have um, a total of uh, 24 full-time staff right now. Of course, some staff you know come and go uh, under the three different units where we have the education, environmental education unit, we have the bear care unit, and the sales admin uh, unit to run the center. We are located in northern Sabah, like what Peter said, um, and then. Uh, Station ourselves at the city near called Sandakan, you know, and then our center is actually at the forest edge of this Kabili Sapilo Forest Reserve. 
and uh, yeah, and we are next to the Sofilo Orangutan Rehabilitation Center as well. And then uh, in total, our our center have about five uh, hectares of, uh, of of land. Half of it is forested area where we um, build our forest enclosures and the bear house. And then um, and then uh, these are the major funders that fund our projects. Uh, very. Thankful to Sam Dhabi Foundation, very thankful to the Ministry of Tourism Malaysia and also the Sabah State Governments to uh, fund us to make our project possible. So, so I'm going to show you really quick about some of the pictures of our centers. You know, I hope that one day you can visit uh, our center and, and see the bears and the center for yourself. Uh, yeah, so this is an aerial pictures or drone pictures of our of our center. Behind those forests are our forest enclosures where the bears, where the rescue bear roam during the daytimes and the bear houses and on the right and then uh, the visitor center on the uh, left. Okay, after six years of a, a lot of um, uh, fundraising and building and construction, so the the facilities that uh, we finally opened to the public in 2014, and then after that, visitors can come and view the sun bears in their natural surrounding and the safe distance in a manner that this is. Uh, since sun bear, wild sun bear is so difficult to observe in the wild. You know, our center actually provide a very uh, good opportunity for people to observe the behaviors of the wild sun, of a sun bears and so on. We also privileged to have a uh, uh, visit by very, very prominent uh, uh, people across the world, like Sir David Edinburgh, Dame Judi Dench, and Thomas Lovejoy, who is the godfather of biodiversity. And actually, he coined the name bio bio biological diversity. Uh, back in the 80s. So it's very relevant to the theme that we are celebrating the global biodiversity uh, today. Okay, so so we are very lucky to have uh, many visitors uh, visit us uh, since 2014. These are the numbers like 2019, we have more than uh, 84,000 visitors visited our center. And then, um, and then 2020, last year, uh, we have to close to the public after March 18 because of the pandemic started in this part of the world. And then uh, the numbers drop. Of course, in 2021, we do not have any visitors. Uh, and then the ticket sales also help us because it generates revenues to run our centers. Here. So it's very important source of income and how we sustain our works and pay for all of the works that we uh, we are working here because of this uh, ticketing from the visitors uh, that managed to, uh, you know, pay for all our expenses. Uh, our our works uh, are quite a lot, like what I mentioned just now, you know, the very first thing is uh, improve animal welfare. And then uh, we actually work closely with the Sabah Wildlife Department, especially their Wildlife Rescue Unit to rescue all of the captive bears and pets bear across Sabah. And then uh, for the last 13 years, we have uh, rescued a total of 65 sun bears uh, um, uh, across Sabah. And then on various occasions, many bears are rescued as a pet in their home. Some of them were rescued from like a mini zoo, private managerial in the park, uh, crocodile farms, you know. And then uh, right now, uh, we still have uh, 43 bears left at our center. And then, uh, and then the rest, like we have experienced, ten bears die from OH and various uh, occasions, including strike by lightning. You know, uh, yeah, all of that. And then we have released ten bears, and also two translocated uh, sun bears uh, being 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 released as well. When we receive all these pet sun bears, you know, they are come in all different kind of. Uh, like 99.9% .9 are very pathetic situation, just like this bear is called Betong, where we received uh, her uh, last year. And then uh, she was very malnourished. She was only, weigh only like 1.4 kilograms. At first, we thought she was a tiny, she was a very young, few months old bear. But after that, we found out that, oh, this is not like, you know, one or two months old. She's actually four months old, four or five months old, or four months or five months old son that's supposed to weigh 10 kilogram and then uh, she only weigh like 1.4 you know how serious how mount how 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 malnourished she is you know when we receive her so it takes us a lot of times and efforts to nurse all of these cups into a uh, normal cup to grow up you know so all of that uh, yeah so a lot of work a lot of work so every bears have their unique story and every bears when they came to us they all traumatized 
uh, and then uh, it takes us a series of uh, seriously long time to gain their trust and after that walk them in the forest and slowly introduce them into the forest where they truly belong so since since come and then uh, after a series of training uh, they will release uh, from the bear house into the forest enclosures these are the pictures of uh, bears you know the very first step uh, step in uh, introduce or step into uh, the, the the forest after after the trainings uh, that they need to do, and then uh, and and they can enjoy the forest uh, in the in the in the daytimes, and then in the nighttime they still have to be housed in the bear house. Yeah. So beside the animal welfare, the second important thing that we do is conservation education. You know, um, yeah. So we work with a series of uh, NGOs, also got funding from various funding agency to pay for our. Uh, education program and it is extremely important to educate the younger generation especially uh, of course the general public is, is equally important about the importance of sun bears the importance of our uh, forest and so on and so forth so these are the numbers of school kids that visited our centers and then uh, for the school that cannot come to our center we actually conduct education outreach program visiting their zoo uh, their schools and then tell them deliver the message, deliver the story about the importance of sun bears and so on and so forth. We are also a research facility. Over the years, we have uh, uh, partnership with several university, either uh, from Malaysia and also international university, to conduct a series of uh, uh, research on wild sun bears and also our our captive sun bear at the centers. And then uh, so far, we have uh, published a dozens of uh, publications. Uh, you can visit my um, uh, uh, research gate to you know read the list of publications that we have uh, uh, published so far. So it's a very rewarding to see there are younger generations or younger students who have the interest on conducting research on wild sun bears, and hopefully, you know, they I can pass my baton to them, and then uh, they can be a uh, sun bear biologist or sun bear conservationist and do the conservation work to conserve sun bears. Uh, we also run uh, a, a volunteer program, and actually, volunteer program is a big program from our center, especially during the early days where we don't have a lot of funding, but we need a lot of work to construct lots of um, facilities at our center. So we established this uh, uh, BED program, Bear Action Team Volunteer Program, where we recruit groups of volunteers from Rally International, Cam International, Alloy Expeditions, and other school groups as well to come here and work on a small construction projects and uh, and it's extremely very very rewarding and it works really well to help us and then we also have other volunteers husbandry volunteers and internship program for school students and general public and then uh, there are several universities who have been sending the students uh, to our centers to do all these internship programs or uh, volunteer programs and uh and and i'm very proud to say that you know from until now i think we have several i think we have close to four thousand uh, volunteers come and help us uh, on all the work that we do although you know we are caring for like 40 something more than 40 sun bears at our center but the work that we need to uh, uh do is actually quite a, a lot we actually need a, a, a team or an army of volunteers come and help us and in terms of rehabilitations, uh, uh, yeah, we do a lot of this as well, as you, as you know. So all of the bears that we rescue here, especially the bear cubs, they are all of a mom has been killed. So we have to become the surrogate mother uh, to nurse them, to take care of them, and so that one day they can be released back into the wild. These are the 10 pictures, uh, 10 bears. Uh, that we have been released uh, back into the wild, you know. So everybody had their own story. We started to release Natalie uh, in 2015, May 16, and that's why we commemorate that day, May 16, as International Sun Bear Day, which we just celebrated last weekend. Yeah, so uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very good day for us to, you know, remember sun bears, and hopefully they, we can bring hope to them and, uh, yeah. So here at our Bonin Sunbed Conservation Center, because our forest uh, uh, setting, you know, they can enjoy the forest, they can display their natural behavior like nest building, like foraging in uh, 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 wild food items, you know, all of that. And then when they are ready, we put a radio collar on them and then 
we released them. And uh, in the past, we have chartered helicopter to release those bears back into the forest, back, back to the middle of the forest, you know. So all of these have like good stories, have a very, very uh, 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 important learning experience for us. Yeah, all of them fitted, fitted with a satellite collar and then we know exactly where they go. Uh, how they are doing in the forest. And these are some of the, you know, the, the, the locations and also the location pictures where we can plot how much home range that they use for each bears and so on. Yeah, and then we also have two translocation bears where these bears are conflict bears try to break into somebody's house and then we move them, set, uh, feed them with a satellite cord and then started to study their movement thereafter. Uh, again, ecotourism that I mentioned is very important. You know, something that I call conservation ecotourism has actually worked really well here because one of the products of uh, our conservation work is promote ecotourism and ecotourism pay for our operations and pay for our work and also pay for everything else. So hopefully with the, uh, the tourists coming back after this pandemic, we can do this, we can do the, do the, do the, uh, promote ecotourism and improve people livelihood and you know slow down hunting and poaching and that kind of bad things happened uh yeah although we have been working uh specifically with sun bears you know my our aims is actually quite 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 big into the uh it is actually incorporates the the whole um uh ecosystem the forest ecosystems and then uh, the integrity of the forest ecosystem is what we need to do so I hope that with our uh, the, with the work that we do over here at the Bonin Samai Conservation Center, it can inspire other people to conserve other wildlife species and conserve our our our, our forests. Especially right now, we are facing with the threats from, say, global climatic change, and of course, you know, this pandemic is another good example that we need to keep wildlife wild and also live harmoniously with nature. Thank you very much. Yeah, for those of you who are interested on our work, you know, please feel free to visit our website and here's our website. Yeah, just type in, uh, search for Bonin Sambay Conservation Center or BSPCC, you can find all of that. And we do have a lot of uh, social media for you all to learn about our work. Okay, good. Thank you so much. All Thank right. you so much, Dr. Wong. <laughs> Very, very insightful yeah. as always. And uh, yes, I really admire the work that you do. Thank you so much for, for working so hard and for looking after the sun bears despite the ongoing lockdown that we have here in Malaysia during this COVID period. Yeah, okay. it, is, it is hard. Yeah, but but we have we have no choice but to you know face all of the challenge and have to keep on going. You know, giving up is not a choice for us. Yeah. Absolutely. We keep on going. Uh, there's a question for you here. Um, for the release of rehabilitated sun bears into the wild, uh, are there any protocols for pre-release acclimatization and conditioning? Uh, yes, actually, there is a series of that. Actually, not all bears that we rescue are releasable. We have to first look at, you know, first, the, 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 those release bears have to be like trained from tiny, trained from cubs. If we rescue a five years old or 10 years old bears that has been lived in a small cage, those are not released candidates, only the cubs. And then in the process of growing up, we still need to see the ability of, say, for example, their instinct on finding food, their tree climbing, avoiding human avoidance and all of that. So that's actually a long period of, uh, of, uh, of, of process. And, and again, not all bears are releasable. Yeah. How long does the process actually take, Dr. Wong? So let's well, say you've received a cub, um, you know, how long does it take before you are confident enough to release it back into the wild? At least four years. So in the wild, we know that a sun bear cubs tag along with mom at least three to four years until they are fully grown because there's a need for them to be strong enough, big enough to defend for themselves and let alone all the things that they need to learn. And then, uh, because we know that one of the threats uh, actually when they live in the forest is actually other bears. They live in a bad, huge bear wall. So we have to wait until they are fully grown. So here, all of our, our released bears, we have to wait until they're at least four years old before they can release. Yeah. Of course, you know, we, in, in the, in the last stage, uh, they are, you know, we actually minimize the contact. We actually don't encourage them to come back to the bear house. They live and stay in the forest enclosures. Um, yeah, all the times and yeah, and sometimes yeah, they do feeding and and a lot of things, a lot of a uh, very complicated process. Yeah, 
I can right, spend another hour talking about, about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe can you give us an example, you know, um, um, for one of the processes, like how do you, how do you uh, encourage the bears to forage in the wild, to learn these foraging okay. skills, which obviously their mother is not around to teach them. Yes. Okay. So, 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 so the good thing is that bear cubs still have the instinct. So we have to show them, we have to show them this is food, this is the forest when they are still young. So therefore the walking the bear cub process, when we first rescue a bear, a, a bear cub, and then the next thing is trying to establish bonding uh, with them. And after that, we will, we can bring them out to the forest uh, to, to, to walk them. And then the bonding established, they actually treat the, 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 the carer as a surrogate mother, you know, they can, Hundred percent trusted this this this, this person, yeah, our, our our stuff, and then uh, and then when they are in the forest, we actually sometimes need to like show them that oh this is uh, termite nest, and we have to like break it a uh, break break part of the termite nest, and then once they sniff on the termite uh, nest, they instinct kicking in, and then they just digging and digging and start leaking and leaking and and, and, and leaking. So it's a small pro it's a slow process, and then uh, yeah, so cause in the wild. Uh, last time I have a, a radio call of female wild bears where I observe her feeding, and then at the time she was she has a, a yearling cub which is about one years old. You know she was like feeding on a termite nest, and after that she called the cub. They, she was like <laughs> call the cubs, and then the cubs come here and feed on the termite nest, and then after that she move around uh, to look for other food items. So there is this kind of a uh, process, and we are actually telling them, showing them, or teaching them how to do that. And sometimes we have to encourage the bear cubs to climb trees. So you see the one of the pictures of our staff actually climbing a tree. I cannot do that kind of job anymore, you know, but our staff who is like still agile, still young, still strong, uh, can do that. And then once they find out that they can actually climb tree, they are used to kicking in and they just shoot up. And then on trees, they can harvest fruits directly on trees. On trees, they can look for nests. They can look for, you know, termites and other invertebrates that can be considered as food. And, you know, you if you've been to our forest, of course, you've been to our forest, you know that our forest canopy is so spectacular, you know, average height, 50 meters tall. And then every single inch has life, including a lot of vertebrates and invertebrates and to bears, all of these are food. So when a sun bear climb up a 40 meters, you know, canopy tree, when they found this big bird nest fern, it is like a jackpot. There's so many food items that they can eat. You know, in the forest, anything that move, anything that move in vertebrates, vertebrates are considered as bear food. You know, the bears have no, um, uh, they are not picky at all. You know, they will eat everything that can be considered as food. So it is really amazing to see that kind of process. Fantastic. Yes, I do miss going to Sandakan and definitely uh, miss your center. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to meet up again in Sabah once this whole uh, COVID situation has eased back. Um, I just want to say that for those of you who are listening in and you'd like to make a donation or help out Dr. Wong, you can check out the website here, bsbcc.org.my. Um, they also uh, receive uh, volunteers and uh, visitors to the center once uh, the COVID situation eases off. Um, do consider visiting the center. It's a re really, really beautiful center um, surrounded by the lush uh, jungles of Borneo. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Wong. Stay safe and take care. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you, everybody. Bye.